Good afternoon. I'm Dan Dasho with Cloverland Electric Cooperative, and I'm here this afternoon to talk about the Sault Ste. Marie area in our right-of-way maintenance schedule uh, that's coming up uh, during the summer. And uh, I wanted to uh, go over a number of things before we get into the details, but our intention is to go through the different areas and the timing we expect to be in the different areas so that the public will have an idea of when we'll be coming through. First of all, right-of-way maintenance is necessary for safe and reliable power uh, for our communities. We need to provide safety for, uh, thank you, Linda. We need to provide safety for our employees who are required to work on the lines, both under normal maintenance as well as uh, outage conditions uh, at night during storms and so forth. They have to have the necessary clearance so they can safely do their work. We also need to have uh, clearance from the trees so that the public is safe. Uh, our lines operate at over 7,000 volts and during wet and damp conditions and the trees are touching the lines, that can be uh, an issue for the public and we don't want to go in that direction at all. So we need to provide that safety both for our employees and for the general public. And also the reliability comes into this because if the lines are, if the trees are too close to our lines, then windstorms, rainstorms, and so forth can cause outages of those lines. So in order to avoid that, we're required to keep the lines uh, maintained properly. And we are also required to do that by the National Electric Safety Code, as well as by the Public Service Commission, which oversees our outage uh, situations. We maintain more than 3,490 uh, miles of distribution line in a five county area. This means that we are constantly doing tree maintenance on our right of ways throughout the area. We, and we do it on an eight year cycle. So we come through, do an area, and it's, it takes us about eight years to get back to that area and redo that trimming because as we all know, the trees will grow. In this area, in this year, we're going to be spending approximately $1.2 million on right-of-way maintenance. And that's a pretty typical figure for us on an annual basis. We took the opportunity in March to send out information to all of our members in the Sioux area, in the area where the trees are going to be maintained, and gave folks information that we are coming, we are going to do maintenance, and we talked about the areas where we're going to be uh, working. We also provided a phone number, and uh, Jim Wilson, who's our right-of-way management uh, uh, staffer, uh, so that uh, individuals who are interested in what was going on could uh, give Jim a call and find out what the process was going to be. In our March magazine, we did a half-page article as well on our right-of-way maintenance, which was set for, this, uh, for the spring and the summer, with the idea, again, to notify the membership that we're going to be out doing maintenance on our right-of-ways. For us, on the distribution lines, we look for a clearance of 15 feet on either side of the pole to give us enough clearance so that we can uh, maintain the lines that are out there and provide reliability and safety. And we had uh, a discussion about those issues uh, in our March magazine. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is talk about the very specifics of the right-of-way maintenance and the schedule that we've got going. When we take a look at Sault Ste. Marie, and there's a map up right now showing the entire area, we see uh, the streets and the boulevards and so forth, but we also see the electrical circuits 
that supply the electricity to our members in Sault Ste. Marie. We have a substation located at Magazine Street, uh, right near Carl's, and that is substation supplies uh, three different feeders, three different circuits throughout the area, Magazine 2, 3, and 4. We also have a substation on Portage Street by the hydro plant, and that supplies about four different feeders throughout the city. And then we also have the Three Mile substation uh, located off of Three Mile and, and uh, Mackinac Trail. And that supplies an additional two circuits that we're going to talk about here. So these circuits feed throughout the area, and we will be using them because when we do um, our tree trimming plan, we say that we are going to be working on these different feeders at this different time, and that's why I bring that out. Okay, so in June, we are going to be working on our feeder uh, PR2 out of Portage Substation, number two and number five. And Jim Wilson, come on up, okay. and you can describe a little bit of the detail of the, the area that we're going to be doing. Spe okay. Speak into the mic. All right, so the, the PR2 feed uh, comes over our substation uh, right by the hydro plant on Portage, extends down Portage Avenue, uh, picks up a few of the side roads um, off of Portage, and then extends down past the Sugar Island Ferry Dock. Uh, there's a few locations along the armory, some of the side roads that it picks up there. Um, and then that feeder actually extends down to uh, Three Mile Road. Right, and on that, on that, Jim, uh, we have crews uh, working on uh, Riverside right now that are doing the brushing work. Right, yep. Those we've, right now, at this time, we've got uh, what we call manual or ground crews. And those crews are, are removing the underbrush that can be removed safely without having a bucket crew at that location. So those, those crews will con continue to uh, do that work throughout our uh, territory and the city. Um, they do not have a set schedule. Uh, so as you see, this schedule that we're putting forth tonight, that's a set schedule for, for the bucket crews. Um, the manual crew, with the amount of work that they have, uh, they may be on portage uh, working along, along that road for a little while, and then they'll be moving on to another location where there would be work where they could uh, safely work without having a bucket truck. So we anticipate that during the month of June, we will have bucket trucks uh, in this area. Let's see if I can pinpoint, oh, very good. Uh, we'll have bucket trucks coming along here through June, and we expect that work to last most of the month. Yep, that's correct. Okay. Oops. Now I'm gonna be in trouble, I gotta back up. There we are. Okay, for July, we're gonna be working on uh, MZ4. Jim, you wanna describe yep. that area? No, and the, by the way, you can use the pointer oh, right okay. here to show the different areas. Okay, now the, the MZ4 circuit starts our magazine substation, that's right by, by the locks and Carl's Cuisine. It extends down Ridge Road, uh, it picks up a couple of the other side streets here, then it goes across into the West Pier area. Uh, it continues down along uh, West Portage, um, kind of by the bridge, and then it gets up by um, the Holiday Gas Station area in here. Uh, then it continues along um, out into the West 4th Avenue and Algonquin areas. Um, it'll be up into the uh, Oak Streets, Chestnut, and then it actually extends into uh, Sherman Park area in the shallows at the uh, far end of it. On that circuit, uh, Jim, do you see much uh, of a need for manual crews to be in there brushing? Uh, the manual crews on, on the MZ4, there's, there may be a little bit of work along MZ4, but um, most all of that would be on some of the some of the back roads. There is a 
one of the roads off of 12th Avenue, and then uh, South Street has also had some uh, work where the, where the bucket crew or the manual crews have done some work on that circuit. Where's the 12th Avenue one? Uh, let's see, 12th Avenue would be without without having my glasses. Let's see. Oh, I'm having a hard time seeing it. <laughs> this moment, I got to put my glasses on. I'm sorry. I know. I got to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. 12th Avenue would be... All right, here's South Street here. This is this right in this area would be Foss Hill. Um, and then South Street is, is down... Uh, that stretch if I can see right. This would be railroad tracks going through there. Okay. So yeah, and this this up here I believe is uh, the chestnut area and then it extends up toward Sherman Park and up up toward the shallows. Okay. Or no I'm sorry not I'm sorry the MZ4 circuit just extends up by Hyde Street in Algonquin is where that ex extends to. So this this here, Dan, mm -hmm. this would be 12th Avenue. Oh, okay. Right in there. Very good. And then Hyde is just right there. Oh, so, yeah. So there will be some brushing, and then the crews will be out in the bucket trucks most of July in that area. Right. Yep. Okay. So is that area described as what you're showing, or earlier you said all the invites for us up? No, the MZ4 uh, circuit, I'm sorry, that just extends up. Uh, West Portage up to Hyde Avenue, oh, right in Algonquin. Yep. Right, that's correct. Yep, that was I was getting that. My glasses aren't. Uh, <laughs> that was like details more, a little more small. Like, uh, oh, that uh, Lakeshore than what it is. Like the we're going to be back in the Lakeshore area later on, and we'll get to that. Okay, let's move to August. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to do, um, let's see, PR3, portage number th uh, circuit three. Yep. Uh, why don't you take us through that one? Okay. Now, the PR3 circuit, that comes over a portage substation, uh, and then it comes down, works its way over towards Shunk Road, and then goes down a little ways through here, hits some of the, the location, um, off of Shunk Road and then extends down to Three Mile. So the PR3 circuit is, is not one of our larger circuits. Uh, and the crew should get, get through that one fairly easy in, in August. So. All right. So now we're into September. And we're going to work mm -hmm. on Three Mile number one circuit out by 129, I believe. Yep. Go ahead. And three mile circuit that that comes over the substation. Uh, the substation is uh, right across from the Dondi Lanes off of Mackinac Trail. Um, and that comes down to some of the locations right by Walmart. There's a stretch that goes and it catches some of the businesses along the I 75 business spur. Um, and then also it goes down. A little bit beyond M129 to the east, and then it goes north on M129 up into the Minneapolis Woods area. There's a little stretch in by Taco Bell through that through that area also, and then this is up. Uh, I believe they're um, west 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th. This would be up by uh, McGehee Apartments. Um, some of the areas up in here, and that uh, that would be the extent of the of the TM1 circuit. Okay, and then in September and October, we have uh, going back out to the Lakeshore area. Yep. And this is this is the TM4 circuit, and this is actually the the line that feeds out to. Uh, to the shallows area. Um, this circuit goes across uh, Three Mile, runs down West 14th Avenue, uh, down Foss Street, 
then this is the circuit that actually goes down to South Street up in the Algonquin area. Then it works out through uh, the Chestnut uh, area, um, Oak Street, Walnut Street. Those would, would be uh, the streets that are right up in here. And there's Third Avenue down here along the shoreline. Then it extends up here. This would be the Sherman Park area. Then it comes across Sherman Park Road. Uh, this parkway, this is a street that hasn't been completed by the bucket crews yet. Um, most all of Lakeshore Drive has been completed. And a lot of the side streets off of uh, Lakeshore Drive and then there's still some work as, as you go up into the west end of, uh, of our system in the city. Um, there'd be some work up here on uh, Bermuda Ave, also uh, Oriole Avenue up in that area. Um, so that, that, would, uh, that work there would be most of that should be completed in September and October through those, uh, those areas up there. Good. Okay, if you have questions uh, regarding this, please get a hold of Jim, and he can come out and visit with you, talk about your trees and so forth, and uh, what's being impacted. You can also go to our website at uh, www.cloverland.com backslash 2016 schedule, and you'll have the same information we've just gone through. So that if you've uh, forgotten when we're going to be around, you can go check on our website and uh, we'll let you know. Um, Jim, uh, one thing I know you've been doing is you've been going out um, on the different circuits and marking the trees. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Right. I've, I've started marking trees on the, uh, on the MZ3 circuit. I'd gotten uh, the map overlay from the city um, where I could identify the... Uh, trees are city-owned trees. Um, so on this last circuit that we've that we've been working on, uh, that's went really well. And I've got plans to continue with marking uh, the trees with blue ribbons throughout the city to identify it as a city-owned tree. And as far as the city-owned trees, uh, we've been working with the city as far as how we're going to handle those. Um, most of it's been, uh, uh, most of the trees that are right underneath the power line have been removed. Right. And uh, uh, we've been working with uh, the city on this throughout the process uh, so that they're aware of what's going on. We've been working with the City Tree Commission so that they've been aware of what's going on. We have a, com Jim put together a complete list of the trees uh, that we're uh, going to be interested in dealing with during this cycle. So if you see blue, blue ribbons in your neighborhood, it's a good time to give a call uh, in if you have questions about trees in your yard by the lines. So look up, take a look at your trees in our lines, and if you have any questions, Jim's the guy to give a call to. Okay. Uh, yes, the phone number is 632-5144. And that's Jim Wilson. Give him a call and he can uh, hopefully address your questions. Do we have any questions? You mentioned the blue ribbons. Is that the most major trees you put those out before the crews cut them? What I'm doing is I, I'm putting them on the Use tree. The microphone. I've been putting the blue ribbons on trees that are identified on the maps that I have available that show them as a city tree. Um, and that, that, that's why I just started that on the MZ3 circuit at the request of the uh, city and we'll continue that process. So the city doesn't have any input or that's going to be working out of the city? Well, no, I, I've been trying to get ahead of the crews um, and getting the map available. I just got the maps available for that, for the GIS system um, with the tree inventory. 
and I, I'm going to continue putting ribbons on before the crews get there. I'll, I'll get ahead of them as quickly as I can, but I'm also covering our, our whole system, the work throughout our whole system. So the, the numbers of trees that we're finding on the circuits um, that are remaining, like the PR2 circuit, the one that goes along Porridge Avenue down towards Sugar Island and hits some of the Elm is one of the side streets off of that. It goes up by the golf course there. Um, we're not seeing as many trees, city-owned trees, as what we had seen in the city where the sidewalks are prevalent. Um, but I, I do have the map overlay, and we're definitely working toward, uh, again, those, those marked. Now, as far as the city, there, we've been removing the trees that are directly underneath the power line. Um, if there's any questions, that would have to be brought up with the city uh, through, the, through the adjacent property owners would be the best, best option. Um, but as far as going forward, uh, or our beginning plan was to, to remove all the trees, and that's, that's one of the, as a Tree City USA, um, the, the Arbor Day Foundation doesn't recommend topping or v and trees. So, and there's a, a bulletin that I have that, that identifies a, a topped or v tree is not a good tree, especially to have underneath the power line. Um, so the recommendation, even through the Arbor Day Foundation, is after a tree has been, been cut or v so many times it's preferable to, to remove the tree and then plant the tree with the appropriate tree for that location. Um, a lot of the trees throughout the city, if you start to look up into the canopy of, of those trees, you're seeing a lot of dead branches. Um, now those dead branches, when they're hanging over a city sidewalk or a city street, it definitely, and I, I think it definitely creates a, a liability. I mean, if that branch were to fall down on, on top of someone or a vehicle, it's, it's uh, definitely, in my opinion, a, a hazard. Um, Bonnie, could you put up a picture of the tree? I'm not opposed to the tree guy. I just think it'd be good if the citizens know a little more up front what the properties are involved with. I got all the time that the trees are all gone. They cut them. What do I do with the wood? You know, and right. What are the next five of the dome? It is what up and happen. Right, yeah, I, I think I remember uh, some birch trees that you and I had worked yeah, with. Was that, that's your place in Bruma? Yeah, right. Right, um, yeah, up, up on the screen right now, there's, this is an example of a tree uh, that was growing up underneath the power line. Uh, a tree that you can see that it's up in around the cable lines, which are the dark black lines. And then up above that, we actually have some underbuild on this pole. And then at, at the very top of the pole, that's where our, our lines would be energized at over 7,000 volts. Um, so the trees that, that are right around the, the lines are what we call phases. Uh, for us to actually replace this pole, it, it creates some real challenges because we, we've got to keep all the lines energized, of course, and then we extend those phases out on fiberglass arms so that a new pole can be safely installed in place of the old pole. Um, you know, at one time we used to be able to shut down a lot of lines and, and you know, you could shut a city block off when there wasn't computers or all the electronics that we have now, but for nowadays, we, we try to do everything under an energized condition. And for our linemen, they're, they're working with high voltages of uh, anywhere from 7,000 to 14,000 volts. And, and uh, phase to phase, it can be up to 20, over 25,000. So, you know, we definitely want to keep it safe for them and their work. And, you know, most times you don't realize how important having clearances around the power lines is until you have a major storm. Uh, you know, the folks 
down in Lansing a few years ago, they went through an ice storm that knocked people out of power for, for seven days in a row. Um, and that was between Christmas and New Year's. Um, excuse me. Having that kind of a, a storm through this area, you can, you can just imagine how devastating that could be, especially during that time of year. We, we wouldn't just have power lines down. We'd, we'd have frozen pipes possibly and a lot more issues. So I, I, you know, we all understand that we hate to see any of the, the mature trees go, but having them directly under the power line, and I, I know a lot of folks say, they say, well, Edison hadn't cut those trees for many years, and, and that's correct. And, and during that time, we all had the opportunity to, to enjoy these trees, but they're, they're mature trees, and they're, they're not getting any younger, and, and our power lines throughout the city of Sault Ste. Marie aren't getting any newer either. And at some point, we're gonna to have to invest some money to, to replace these lines. And when we do that, we definitely want it safe for, for the men that are working on it. Any other questions? Okay. All right. I guess I started with this. Well, not really. Actually, We're, we're spending about the same budget. Okay, but, so then if you were spending the same budget this year to do this drastic cutting, why couldn't have that been spent last year or the year before to do this in a more minimal way of doing it? Um, I'm talking about the shock effect. Uh, uh, I walk down, we talk to neighbors, I walk down other streets where they suddenly were missing all kinds of trees, um, drastically cut trees. And I'm not against trimming the trees. I called you guys last year, you trimmed my trees. Right. My property. Yeah, but, okay. Commission, thanks. There's a six year commission to look at doing things with trees and, and causing us to be, or creating a something where we're the tree city. Um, it wasn't very publicized because I didn't talk to anybody that even knew you existed. 
So now all of a sudden we come home, we find that our trees are cut down. Talking to my neighbors, the most dramatic story was a little girl who they had to deal with because she had named the tree in front of their house. They never got any kind of a in, in, chance to input anything to anybody about trying to do something to save that tree. You talk about the fact that they're city trees. Okay, you've identified the city trees. I don't know if all the trees in that easement are city trees or not, but the people that live there should have something to say. Now you're giving them an opportunity, and that's great, and I'm really glad that you're doing that now. I can't do anything about the trees here. The reason I came forward to the city commission, and they said that they were shocked, and that's on tape, that it was so drastic that this is going on like this, uh, obviously they were getting some phone calls. I know Mr. Oliver was when I talked to him. I know Jim was when I talked to him. My point is, and you're doing that now, I hope that the citizens not only take more opportunity to say something to you about the trees that are in their vicinity, I was hoping more people would be here. But trust me, I, from what I understand, there's lots of people interested in this. I thank you for giving more of a plan. And I hope you do indeed, Mark, and give those people opportunities. I didn't get any in my neighborhood. And if I sound a little upset, that's why. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. That's a mic drop. I never did one before. Why not? <laughs> any other questions? <clears throat> Sorry. Well, thank you for taking the time to come out and again, visit our website. If you have questions regarding uh, when we're going to be in your neighborhoods, it's on our website showing it. And if you have questions, you want to know about specific details, give Jim a call. And he'll come out and visit with you and answer your questions as best we can. And again, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bonnie.